Oh, that, that, that's interesting. Again, sorry, by the way, just to wrap up on the corporate, let, let us also try not to be corporate psychopaths ourselves because it's easy <laughs> to identify them. Uh, let us also try and, uh, as Muslims, we should also try not to be corporate psychopaths. And we should learn to sort of ask people to help hold the mirror up to us. But, but yeah, having, having said that, um, I, without a doubt, uh, you know, for me, uh, you know, I don't consider myself a, a, a pious person in that sense. I'm, I'm just grateful for the gift of Islam in my life. And to that extent, uh, what it has done for me as a person. Uh, a number of things. One, for, number one, Islam gives me perspective when I walk into situations. That is, has been an incredibly valuable thing for me. Islam gives me perspective. When good things happen in good times, it gives me that perspective to know that, ah, this thing is from Allah. This blessing is from Allah. It is not because of your brilliance or how amazing you are or everything. As we said, you can prepare, but the results, the outcome belongs to Allah. So that perspective is always very helpful. And the flip side as well, when things are rough, when it looks like, ah, subhanAllah, after all the effort I made and everything, this, has, this project has been an absolute disaster. Recognizing again that you gave it everything, the, the, it is the color of Allah that the outcome is this. What lesson can you learn and so on and so forth. Another thing Islam has done for me is helping me to calibrate my response to situations. You know that ayah of the Quran that says, do not let your hatred for a people make you unjust, cause you to do injustice to them. Be just, it is the closest to the fear of Allah. For me, that has been an extremely important thing, especially as well as you rise to positions of power and authority and influence in an organization, where you can affect people's careers, where if you don't like somebody, how you treat them can, be, can become injustice because maybe somebody offended you in one way or another. Islam has given me that ability to calibrate my responses, not to go overboard. I mean, or even when you go overboard, to be able to, realize maybe you have said something very unpleasant or something and it's time for salah and you realize you're not standing before your lord you're standing before your lord all of you realize that subhanallah i'm exercising authority over somebody i'm not standing up in front of one who exercises authority over me so it helps you to calibrate to pull back to gauge that's another thing one more thing islam has done for me is managing ethical dilemmas sometimes when i read about some of these ethical dilemmas from people you know, who don't have the benefit and the gift of Islam. I sometimes actually, I feel sorry for them, you know, because Islam, a lot of things that people think are ethical dilemmas for us is very, very clear. You, it doesn't keep you up at night. Well, oh, is this right? Is this wrong? You know, this is right. You know, this is wrong. Now, the execution of it, like if you're in the middle of it and you need to figure out, okay, how do I get out of this mess? Or these people are planning to do this. How do I avoid not getting entangled while not becoming, ah, you want to come and spoil our show or whatever. Now that you still have to figure out, okay. But at least you don't know, you have no doubt about what is right and what is wrong. So Islam has been very, you know, for me, that's been helpful. Another thing it has done for me is that consciousness that whether I like it or not, I'm an ambassador of this community, of this religion. You know, so it also helps to curb one's worst instincts. The fact that you know that very often you're the only Muslim, and Zizan mentioned something about that, very often you're the only Muslim in that environment. Uh, very often you're the only Muslim in senior management when decisions are being made. And you know, you know that no matter how you look at it, it's part of your identity, whether you like it or not, because people see you going to pray and so on and so forth, or they start calling you allergy and what have you. So that consciousness also helps. It has helped me to be to avoid some of my worst instincts. Yet another thing, uh, and well, like this is are not things that one is making up, these are real things, is this issue of ihsan, excellence. Okay, you know the prophet, there's a hadith, the prophet said, well, Allah loves, loves that when a servant of his does something, he does it with ihsan, which so it's, it's interpreted as doing it with excellence and so on and so forth. Um, which is just recognizing that mm -mm, it's not just enough to show up, it's not just enough to be there, you must do it, you must perform to excellent standards, you know? And that has helped me as well to, to when you feel like just push in something and that is that, it's that, that Islamic standard has helped a lot 
from that point of view. And finally, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> well, probably the most important thing is the, 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 the power of dua as a fortress and a weapon. When everything looks bleak, when it looks like there's no way out, when it looks like there's no solution, just being able to just go into a corner and just raise your hands and say, Ya Allah, Ya Allah, you know, and then you come out of that. You know, for me, these are the ways that Islam, among many other things, has played an important role in my life. I've been nodding my head and wanting <laughs> the camera to keep talking because I just feel like what he said was just... I've been nodding my head mashallah. too. He was just... Mashallah, was really, he's really spot on. I mean, I think for me, I, 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 begin my, I started my career when I started practicing. So I was in that new phase where you don't even, I mean, I'm probably wearing the not so executive looking scarf. You know, I had to work my way up to get a nice fancy silk scarf that looks nice in the city of London. So I was a little bit not so experienced. So there was a bit of, you know, I was determined internally, but externally not quite, didn't have my, my the right kind of clothes together yet. And I, I built that up kind of gradually, but inside there was a very strong sense of this is what I want to do. I'm not quite sure people were confused saying, how are you going to struggle your career with you're so obviously visibly practicing now and how are you going to fit in? And so people had all their own external thoughts. I said, I don't know if I don't get a great job, fine. I'm happy to just work as a volunteer somewhere. As long as I can pay my bills, I'm not fine. So I was kind of like, it's okay. If I have to give that up, it's fine. You know? Um, so for me, it was very much, it changed my entire um, perspective on life and what was important to me. And that in a sense gives you, that detachment from dunya gives you a certain confidence, you know, and that's exactly what you need in the workplace. Because people, it's more what you, how you behave and how you, your vibe that people feed off than what you say and what you do. So people can tell this person, they're not really that, that at the end of the day, this is not the be and end all for them, you know? Mm. And so that was, that's, it gave me this inner confidence and satisfaction and contentment. The other thing I would say is, um, and it's really very similar to what uh, Brother um, Kamar said, this um, sense of being an ambassador, which, which put me under uh, more pressure than I would ever have put myself under, I must honestly tell you, because I'm, you know, I, I like to do work, I like to work hard, but it pushed me in a, in a completely different way than I would have had to push myself. I thought, look, I'm the only Muslim here. Muslims, you know, in the London I was in the late 90s at the time, you know, Muslims were seen as, you know, people weren't very intelligent, you know, I found as soon as I started wearing the scarf, you know, the person on the tube would be saying, talking to me as if I was an idiot, you know, there was a, there was a sudden mm. change in response to when I wasn't wearing it, you know, so I thought, wow, mm. if, if before even people talk to you, they have this, you need to be so good within seconds that they're like, oh, right, I, I know why she's here. So I would, I would read more than anybody else. If they said, oh, we've got some voluntary presentation we need to do, we have some projects in the law firm, I would always put my hand up, I would always do it. I would work late, I would do, I would just do everything I could do to kind of be the best. Um, within, I, I, you know, I was running projects and really big transactions, you know, the things that you're seeing on the FT the next day. And I'd have to go up into the conference room and go and meet with a group of, you know, CEOs who run a, a very sort of top British organization. And as soon as they see me with my hijab and black and everything, I thought, you could see their faces drop of like, mm -hmm. okay, why did they, what is she doing? Oh. So within seconds, I'd, I'd have to prove to them, I'm, I'm, in, I'm on top of this and I'm the best lawyer you're going to get for this. So within seconds. So I'd really push myself to prepare and I'd really just give it my best. So much so that they're constantly calling you and then they're taking you out for lunch, out of the deal, thinking, oh, that was great. And they're, they're singing your praises, but it, it pushes you above and beyond, you know? And it was Islam that did that for me. It wasn't, it wasn't, if otherwise I would have been thought, oh, this is just too, this is too much stress, you know? But Islam did that for me because I thought, okay, look, I really need to prove a point here, you know? And also for other people coming after me, because they know that, no, we, we recruited a Muslim girl, she was very practicing. And yeah, her going to pray and being Muslim and not drinking had nothing to do with the level of her delivery. So that was the point. Um, yeah. Being in a British firm meant that the pub is a very big part of your life. You know, Friday night, people work very, very hard and Friday evening everyone's going to the pub or this or that. And, and it's really, I mean, I don't mind going to have meals with people and I don't mind socializing, but the pub is not really my, my it's not my environment. So I said to myself, am I gonna be one of those people who just doesn't go? And then on Monday, it's just like, oh, you know her, she's really anti-social. I was like, no, 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 I'm gonna find alternatives. So what did I do? I, I sort of was always scouring, you know, the papers, the magazines for the latest interesting plays in the theatre, the latest interesting festival. I would always invite people to my home. You know, during people used to look forward to Ramadan because I would just, you know, set up a spread and everybody from the senior partners to the junior, they were just, it was like a, a, before Corona, you know, everybody would just come in and they take off their shoes and they loved it. It was like being in a, you know, in a, in a Middle Eastern restaurant, you know, but I put it all in my home and everyone <laughs> would come and saw this Nigerian food or different. So I made it fun. 
So nobody ever said to me, oh, why don't you come to the pub? Nobody even ever said that to me. In fact, somebody said to me one day, this other lady saying, how do you get away with not going to the pub? I really don't like going. It's very male dominated. It's a bit, I don't like the discussions. How come you get away with it? Nobody ever saw, of, and I said, well, I think because I wear the scarf, they kind of realized I wouldn't really fit in. You know, so I, I, I found alternatives to, I didn't just not take part. I thought, okay, I don't want to take part in this way. And that's not even within my job description. So I do my job really brilliantly. Um, maybe I won't come to pop you, but I'm going to really socialize with you and invite you into my world and you'll get to know me really well. And I had, a, and I made an effort to, I always made an effort to have lunch with my colleagues. If there was a dinner, I would be there. If there was any planning, I would be there. So I was engaged and involved in a way that I was comfortable with, you know, um, and that was again, Islam, because obviously I had my own life going on after work, but I thought that I have to really put an effort in here to make sure, um, one, people get to know me and, and realize, oh, actually, you're quite funny. You know what I mean? Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes I have a perception of like, oh, she's very serious, which I'm not at all, of course, but initially people who aren't used to mixing with different religions and cultures will, will think you must be very very serious and you, when after you, realize you can crack a good joke and things like that and um and you're trustworthy you find that when people had problems they would come to you because they realize you're not going to tell anybody about it you'll give them good advice and that's it you know um i think those those were the things that i learned um the main things i'm trying to think of anything else the other thing is i i was always what really helped me i think in the city which is a very particular environment you were talking about your daughter being on wall street i mean these environments are charged and there's there's a very strong culture um, and you do have to have a lot of strength. What helped me a lot is I was always working with um, Islamic NGOs outside of work. I was always working on projects. So I had a big, I, you, know, you have your family and you have your friends, but I had a big sort of spiritual support. You know, so sometimes after work, I'd be going to the, the study circles or we'd be working on some kind of food drive or weekends, we'd be learning. Uh, you know, so I always felt re my batches were always recharged, you know, spiritually recharged. So I had to, when I went into work, if there was some funny situation going on, it wouldn't really get to me that much because I always, I had, I had, all my eggs were not in this corporate basket. And, you know, because people do that, don't they? You have to be, oh, work is not working. But no, if you have all your different things going on outside work and they're, they're charging you, they're charging your batteries yeah. and you're like, okay, this is happening. Well, it's dunya, you know? Um, so yeah. Islam impacted me hugely. And luckily for me, it was a really good firm that they had a prayer room. So there was a lovely little small Muslim community of people who would meet in the prayer room with what would do and you know we pray and reflect and it was a real sort of escape from the rat race in a sense. Um, and quite often when I was furious about situations, I would just go and do my wudu and pray and just say, as, as Kamar said, Allah just help me, <laughs> guide me through the situation. But, but you had, but the firm was very, very open-minded in the sense that they had, an, it was called an interfaith room, but really only the Muslims went there. You know? <laughs> it, was to, it was meant to, the odd person, Buddhist went there to meditate, but it was mostly Muslims, you know, going to pray there. I think I, I only saw one Muslim there and in, in 10 years or something in one numbers in there in that time so that really helped me that centering and then you know connecting with other other Muslims sometimes up there so um, yeah what I would say <laughs>